Well, 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 we're back again with a full review for Summer Mitsuhide. One of our first limited summer adventurers, this laid-back Worm Clan leader kicks things up a notch when anyone threatens to interrupt her nap time. As always, my name is Zenozilus, and let's get straight to it. Mitsuhide's first skill is Mouse's Summer Revenge. If you check this skill on the wiki, it shows you two halves, the second half describing the variant you cast if you have Mitsuhide's unique S2 buff. We're going to ignore the first half because there's only a handful of situations where you use this without the S2 buff. Emergencies like a Void Agony about to expire in Yardabouth, or maybe like the last split second of a fight where a boss only has a pixel left on the HP bar and you have no other skills charged. That's not going to happen often, but basically this skill does a moderate amount of damage and inflicts score trend. You see this mouse? Don't touch it. It's cute, but no touching. With an S2 buff, however, this becomes Mouse's Midsummer Revenge, dealing 2100% damage across 21 hits, as well as dealing extra damage to Scorch Rent targets based on combo count, scaling from 110 to 150% at 50 hits. This consumes the S2 buff, but also immediately readies S1 again. I'll get into what this means for Mitsuhide's rotation a bit later on. This is shareable for 5 skill share points a simple skill dealing a small amount of damage and inflicting Scortrend. Maybe you could run off Element Scortrend Punisher builds, this shared skill doesn't really have much utility going for it, and it's middle of the road when it comes to potency. Mitsuhide's second skill is Dance of the Cornered Mouse. This grants a unique sizzling sunflower buff that stacks up to three times. This also grants strength amp every other cast. Sizzling Sunflower serves no purpose other than to be consumed to empower Mitsuhide's S1. Gather stacks of Sizzling Sunflower, spend them on S1 to do big damage. It's fairly simple, but there's room for optimization. I'll go over this once I cover the rest of Mitsuhide's kit. Mitsuhide's first ability is Squeaky Scramble. Her S1 and Dragon skills do 15% less damage to broken enemies, but she gains 5% attack rate. If her S1 is ready, which should be almost all of the time after the first 10 seconds of the fight, she gets another 10% attack rate. Mitsuhide's third ability is Flurry Scorch Rent Punisher, which gives her plus 35% damage against Scorch Rent targets at 15 combo or above. She's also sleep resist. This kinda makes sense, kinda doesn't, but makes her fairly suited for Volk, Yadabath, and Asura. Neat. Mitsuhide's rotation greatly prefers someone else to be applying Scortrend, since her Scortrend is only on her unenhanced S1 and she wants to avoid using it as much as possible. So, assuming someone else is applying Scortrend, start the fight by charging both your S1 and S2. Activate Agato skill if you've got it, then use your first S2. After this, follow these priorities. Use S2 if you have fewer than 3 Sunflower buffs, if a high urgency target shows up or the boss breaks, dump all of your enhanced S1s on the target. Don't use an enhanced S1 unless you absolutely have to or the fight is about to end. Following this rotation means that Mitsuhide maintains a constant plus 15% attack rate, which translate into an additional SP gain as well as pushing out extra damage from Dragonform standard attacks. It's fairly simple once you get the hang of it. Without a score trend applier, Mitsuhide will have to apply her own score trend first then recharge her S1 and attempt to build S2 stacks and spend them before Scortrend expires. It's not nearly as smooth as having another applicator, so keep that in mind. Meta-wise, Mitsuhide actually feels fairly natural to play in Legend Volk. You've got Dagger's natural mobility to dash in after disengaging to dodge mechanics, and the only part of the fight where you pretty much have to drop combo is when you deal with Squalls. Any other time, combo is fairly easy to keep up. If you have Nobunaga, she's a nice pick for a backline slot to give you combo time. And if you don't, she is sparkable on the current Thousand Day Celebration Showcase. Mitsuhide also plays pretty well for Sinister Dominion. Both the Yadabath fights and Master Asura feature points of the fight where Mitsuhide's stockpiled enhanced S1s can be unleashed for a large amount of backloaded damage. And that's essentially what her S2 is, it's like slowly loading a few powerful shots to be used later on, which works well when Void Agni shows up or when Asura reveals a big ball that needs a good, hard smack. As for the setups, there's four things you'll generally slot in. A source of 40% skill damage, whether that be from twinfold bonds or two separate 20% prints. 12% dagger crit in the 4 star slot. Score Trent Punisher, which unfortunately was only available from a limited print from the New Year event at the end of 2020. Lastly, you'll want Flurry Strength, since you spend most of the fight at a high combo count. In the remaining slots, you could run double buffs or burn Punisher if the fight allows it. 
and if all else fails, there's always crit damage. Overall, Mitsuhide is a pretty solid unit. She doesn't get the privilege of door resistances, but sleep resist is appropriate for most relevant content these days, and her kit leans heavily into burst damage which is favoured for specific Sinister Dominion mechanics. She's also mechanically easier to play than Galalaxy, another Scorch Rent capable flame dagger, so she ends up being both easy to play as well as offering decent returns for the amount of effort you put in. However, AI will fail to use Summer Mitsuhide to her full potential, since it uses her S1 without the Sunflower buffs. As a result, AI Mitsuhide ends up not taking advantage of her additional attack rate passives. If you want an AI dagger, I'd recommend Galalaxy instead. And that's about it for Mitsuhide. If you want to see more gameplay or ask me questions directly, drop a comment down below or join me on Twitch. I stream on Wednesdays and Saturdays, 9.30pm BST. Don't forget, the Dragalia Lost Song Collection giveaway is still running until the 28th of this month. I'll drop a link for that in the description and in a comment too. As always, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.